Good morning. Welcome to our uh, Sunday morning Bible study hour. Um, we are uh, in this for our second week now. Hopefully you are able to join us last week. Um, we are going through a study on some of the more uh, lesser known characters of the Bible and, and looking at their different traits and things that uh, we can apply to our lives. Um, last week, I believe Pastor had uh, emailed out uh, little handouts that we have uh, put together to go along with this study, and I think he's doing that again. Uh, so if you have that, you can follow along. It has all the scriptures right on there. And uh, so you know where we're heading and, and gives you a little outline. And if you are uh, following along on, on YouTube or on Facebook and you uh, um, aren't on our email list, uh, you can go ahead and email us at uh, bbcstanwood at gmail.com. And uh, we can get these things e emailed out to you so that uh, you can be in the loop and follow along. All right, so this morning we are going to study uh, another character from the Old Testament, uh, and this is a, a prophet by the name of Micaiah. And um, we're going to go to 2 Chronicles chapter 18, and we'll spend most of our time this morning in 2 Chronicles chapter 18. So you can uh, just stay there in your Bible. There will be a few other verses, and I will, uh, I will read those out as well. Um, but most of, for most of the time, we're going to be in Second Chronicles chapter 18. Um, now we're going to go ahead and just read the whole thing here, the whole story of Micaiah, uh, from verses 18 or from verses 1 through verse 28 in Second Chronicles uh, 18. And you'll also find the same account almost verbatim. There's a few words that are different in First Kings 22. If you ever want to look over there and, and just compare the two. So starting in 2 Chronicles chapter 18, in verse 1, the Bible says, Now Jehoshaphat had riches and honor in abundance, and joined affinity with Ahab. And after certain years, he went down to Ahab to Samaria. And Ahab killed sheep and oxen for him in abundance, and for the people that he had with him, and persuaded him to go up with him to Ramoth-Gilead. And Ahab, the king of Israel, said unto Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, Wilt thou go with me to Ramoth-Gilead? And he answered him, I am as thou art, and my people as thy people, and we will be with thee in the war. And Jehoshaphat said unto the king of Israel, Inquire, I pray thee, at the word of the Lord today. Therefore the king of Israel gathered together of the prophets four hundred men, and said unto them, Shall we go to Ramoth-Gilead to battle, or shall I forbear? And they said, Go up, for God will deliver it into the king's hand. But Jehoshaphat said, Is there not here a prophet of the Lord besides that we might inquire of him? And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, There is yet one man by whom we may inquire of the Lord, but I hate him, for he never prophesied good unto me, but always evil. The same is Micaiah, the son of Imla. And Jehoshaphat said, Let not the king say so. And the king of Israel called for one of his officers and said, Fetch quickly Micaiah, the son of Imla. And the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, sat either of them on his throne, clothed with their robes, and they sat in a void place at the entering of the gate of Samaria, and all the prophets prophesied before them. And Zedekiah, the son of Chinamah, had made him horns of iron, and said, Thus saith the Lord, With these thou shalt push Syria until they be consumed. And all the prophets prophesied, so saying, Go up to Ramoth Gilead and prosper, for the Lord shall deliver it into the hand of the king. And the messenger that went to call Micaiah spoke to him, saying, Behold, the words of the prophets declare good to the king with one assent. Let thy word, therefore, I pray thee, be like one of theirs, and speak thou good. And Micaiah said, As the Lord liveth, even what my God saith, that will I speak. And when he was come to the king, the king said unto him, Micaiah, shall we go to Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall I forbear? And he said, Go ye up and prosper, and they shall be delivered into your hand. And the king said unto him, how many times shall I adjure thee that thou say nothing but the truth to me in the name of the Lord? Then he said, I did see all Israel scattered upon the mountains as sheep that have no shepherd. And the Lord said, These have no master. Let them return, therefore, every man to his house in peace. And the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, Did I not tell thee that he would not prophesy good unto me, but evil? Again he said, Therefore hear the word of the Lord. I saw sitting upon his throne and all the hosts of heaven standing on his right hand and on his left. And the Lord said, Who shall entice Ahab, king of Israel, that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one spake, saying after this manner, and another after saying after that manner. 
Then there came out a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will entice him. And the Lord said unto him, Wherewith? And he said, I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And the Lord said, Thou shalt entice him, and thou shalt also prevail. Go out and do even so. Now therefore, behold, the Lord had put a lying spirit in the mouth of these thy prophets, and the Lord had spoken evil against thee. Then Zedekiah, the son of Chinema, came near and smote Micaiah upon the cheek and said, Which way went the spirit of the Lord from me to speak unto thee? And Micaiah said, Behold, thou shalt see on that day when thou shalt go into the inner chamber and hide thyself. Then the king of Israel said, Take Micaiah and carry him back to Ammon, the governor of the city, and Joash, the king's son, and say, Thus saith the king, Put this fellow in the prison and feed him with bread of affliction and with water of affliction till I return in peace. And Micaiah said, If thou certainly return in peace, then hath the Lord not spoken by me. And he said, Hearken ye all ye the people. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat and the king of Judah went up to Ramoth Gilead. So here we see the story of uh, Micaiah. And uh, he was a prophet who kind of uh, marched to the beat of his own drum. He didn't follow after uh, what all the other prophets were saying. He listened to the Lord. And that's something we certainly need to do. We need to uh, listen to the Lord and not listen to the influences of other men. Uh, so let's look at a bit, few things from Micaiah's life here as we uh, look through this story. First thing we see is that Micaiah was a faithful prophet of God. We see in verse 13, it says, Micaiah said, as the Lord liveth, even what my God saith, that will I speak. Uh, so Micaiah wasn't interested in pleasing men. He wasn't interested in uh, saying the popular thing. He was interested in doing the will of the Lord and preaching what the Lord had for him to say. We also see that Micaiah served during a bad allegiance, a bad alliance made by Jehoshaphat. We see that in uh, 2 Chronicles 18.1. Uh, now Jehoshaphat had riches and honor and abundance and joined affinity with Ahab. That word affinity uh, means that uh, they were really uh, tight-knit together. They had a liking for each other. They were close to one another. Um, and... Ahab was a, a wicked king. He was a, the king of the uh, tribes of Israel, um, the northern kingdom, and um, Jehoshaphat was the, the king of the tribe of Judah in, in the southern kingdom, and the, the two kingdoms had split off uh, shortly after the time of David, um, and these two kings had this affinity together, and they got back together, and they had this alliance going on, and Micaiah was serving during that time. We also see that Micaiah was hated by the pagan king Ahab. In uh, verse 7 there it says, And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, There is yet one man by whom we may inquire the Lord, but I hate him, for he never prophesied good unto me, but always evil. The same as Micaiah, the son of Imla. Um, it's it's kind of comical here. Uh, you can almost just picture Ahab just pouting and putting his hands on his hip and saying, I hate him. He never says anything good to me. Um, and if you know anything about Ahab, uh, he was a, a pretty uh, wicked king. We'll talk more about that later. Um, we also see that Micaiah was pressured by the religious to go with the flow. We see that in verse 12. It says, And the messenger that went to call Micaiah spake to him, saying, Behold, the words of the prophets declare good to the king with one assent. Let thy word, therefore, I pray thee, be like one of theirs, and speak thou good. Um, so, it wasn't uh, just the evil king that was pressuring him. Uh, it was the, the religious folks that were uh, pressuring him to go with the flow, uh, to say the things that the king wanted to hear, and to not rock the boat. But we see that Micaiah spoke the truth when it wasn't popular. In verse 16 through 17, uh, you see his, his prediction there. He said, I did see all Israel scattered upon the mountains as sheep that have no shepherd. And the Lord said, These have no master. Let them return every man to his house in peace. Um, so basically what he was saying is Israel's going to go out to war and the shepherd's going to get killed. Their leader's going to get killed, t speaking of Ahab. Um, and they're all going to be scattered about because Ahab's dead. They're all going to go back to their homes in peace uh, without their shepherd. Then we see that uh, Micaiah was mocked by Zedekiah, the popular prophet. We see that in verse 23. It says, Then Zedekiah, the son of Chinaha, came near and smote Micaiah upon the cheek and said, Which way went that spirit of the Lord 
from me to speak unto thee. Um, and basically, he was just mocking him. And, you know, he came up to him and slapped him on the face and said, uh, you don't really know what you're talking about. You're, you're full of it. And uh, it kind of reminds you of um, in the New Testament when uh, Jesus was arrested and uh, they had him on trial there. They put a blindfold on him and uh, they slapped him and, and they were making fun of him and they said, tell us which one of us slapped you. Um, and it is a very similar thing going on there. Uh, not, not, no reverence for the, for the man of God, for the word of God, um, and a lot of mocking there from Zedekiah, uh, who seems to be the spokesman for the prophets. But finally, we see that Micaiah's prophecy was proven truthful. And uh, if you look down in verse 33 and 34 in 2 Chronicles chapter 18, we'll see what happened. It says, And a certain man drew a bow at a venture, and smote the king of Israel between the joints of the harness. Therefore he said to his chariot man, Turn thy hand, that thou may carry me out of the host, for I am wounded. And the battle increased that day. Howbeit the king of Israel stayed himself up in his chariot against the Syrians until even. And about the time of the sun going down, he died. Uh, so Ahab was out in battle in Ramoth Gilead, uh, where Micaiah said he was going to die. And some random soldier just fired an arrow up in the air, and it came down and uh, got him uh, right in the chest, right between the joints of the harness, and Ahab died, just as Micaiah had said he would. So that's the story of Micaiah, as we uh, see it there in 2 Chronicles 18. Uh, now let's look at some uh, application and, and some parallels. And so it's interesting, when you, when you look at the, the different characters in this story of Micaiah, when you look at uh, Ahab and, and Jehoshaphat and Zedekiah and Micaiah himself, uh, we see some parallels um, to elements of Christianity today. Um, and you know, they, they, I guess it's said somewhere, uh, there's nothing new under the sun, um, and really the, the, uh, the essence of human nature doesn't change. And we can see in this story things that we see going on even today um, in what we call the uh, Christendom uh, here in our country. So the first parallel we see is um, Ahab as the pagan element of Christianity. Um, what we see about Ahab is that he was unsaved, but he was connected to God's people. If we look over in 1 Kings chapter 16, 1 Kings chapter 16, Verse 29 through 30. The Bible is talking about Ahab here, and starting in verse 29, it says, And in the thirty and eighth year of Asa, king of Judah, began Ahab, the son of Omri, to reign over Israel. And Ahab, the son of Omri, reigned over Israel in Samaria twenty and two years. And Ahab, the son of Omri, did evil in the sight of the Lord above all that were before him. And if you know anything about Ahab's story, we won't go into it too much, but he was pretty much the worst king they had. Uh, if not the worst, he was the one that everybody was compared to. Um, all of the kings afterwards, they would say, uh, you know, he, he followed after Ahab, and um, Ahab just did uh, many wicked things. He put up, um, worshipped Baal, he uh, put up groves, and uh, he just made the people to sin greatly. And he was unsaved. Uh, he was a wicked man, but he was connected to God's people. And, you know, we see that in Christianity today, uh, what the world calls Christianity. Um, we see people that are unsaved, uh, but they are religious, and they bear the name Christian, um, but they're really pagan in their practice. Uh, we see that in the Catholic Church. Um, most of their uh, religious ceremonies and their holidays that they celebrate uh, were borrowed from actual pagans. Um, and uh, if you look at their doctrine and the things they believe, uh, they don't believe the things that are written in the Bible, um, but they are considered Christian, and they're the pagan element of Christianity. We also see that uh, Ahab mixed false religion with true worship. Um, also in 1 Kings 16 there, in verse 32 through 33, Bible says, and he reared up an altar for Baal in the house of Baal, which he had built in Samaria. And Ahab made a grove, and Ahab did more to provoke the Lord of God in Israel to anger than all the kings of Israel 
that were before him. So Ahab um, wasn't just wicked. He, he brought in these other forms of, of worship. And we see that in Christianity today, too, or, or so-called Christianity. We see it a lot with the cults. Um, for instance, if you look at, at somebody like the Mormons, you know, they call themselves uh, the Church of Jesus Christ, and they actually read the King James Bible, uh, but they also bring in their own false doctrines, uh, their own made-up books, the Book of Mormon, and their own practices, and the things that they believe are not the things that are written in the Bible. Uh, they're doctrinally wrong, they're unsaved, it's a false religion, uh, but it's under the guise of Christianity. Another thing that we see about Ahab is that um, he only used the word of God when it suited him. Back in 2 Chronicles 18, verse 4 and 5, it said, And, and Jehoshaphat said unto the king of Israel, Inquire, I pray thee, of the word of the Lord today. Um, you know, Ahab wasn't interested in talking to the prophets and getting any feedback. He was ready to just go to Ramoth Gilead. He said, hey, Jehoshaphat, let's go to Ramoth Gilead. And Jehoshaphat said, well, hey, wait a minute. Shouldn't we ask the Lord here? Um, and so Ahab was only willing to go to the prophets uh, when it suited his purposes. And uh, we see that also today in Christianity. Uh, people like to pick and choose uh, parts of the Bible that they want to use that fit their worldview. They don't want to look at the whole counsel of God. Uh, they don't want to compare Scripture with Scripture. They want to just pull out a verse here, or pull out a verse here that lines up with the way that they think um, so that they can keep living the way they want and they can use this as a crutch. And that's what um, Ahab was doing. So that's Ahab as the pagan element of Christianity. And then there's uh, Jehoshaphat. And uh, Jehoshaphat represents sort of the new evangelical element of Christianity. Um, one of our our members asked me what an evangelical was. Uh, he had read that, and I had to kind of think about it for a minute because I kind of know in my own mind um, what an evangelical is, but I had never really kind of put words to it and defined it. Um, now, to me, an evangelical uh, is someone who um, has the plan of the gospel right. They understand that uh, salvation comes through faith in Jesus uh, through his work on the cross, and that it's not of works. Um, so evangelicals generally believe that, right? Uh, they may not have all of the doctrines uh, of the Bible right, uh, but they're generally, um, they believe that, that uh, Jesus died for our sins and that uh, he's the way to heaven. And they also uh, tend to believe, evangelicals tend to believe in the Great Commission, you know, going out and sharing the gospel with others. Uh, so that's what I define as uh, evangelicals. And so Jehoshaphat here um, represents the new evangelical element of Christianity. And the, the, the hallmark of, of this is that they, they have this element uh, of truth in their lives. Uh, they are saved people, um, but they also have these other elements that are holding them back, that are, are hindering them from reaching their full potential. 2 Timothy 3.5 says, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. And that's what we see um, with a lot of the, uh, the uh, new evangelical Christians, as you call them. You know, these are some of the, the uh, more biblically based uh, Protestants and some of the non-denominational churches. Um, those would, would fall under that um, that sort of a, a new evangelical um, description there. So when we look at, at Jehoshaphat as part of this, we see that he was saved and he walked with the Lord. Um, turn back to 2 Chronicles 17. And in verses 3 through 6, the Bible says, And the Lord was with Jehoshaphat because he walked in the first ways of his father David, and sought not unto Balaam, but sought to the Lord God of his father, and walked in his commandments, and not after the doings of Israel. Therefore the Lord established the kingdom in his hand, and all Judah brought to Jehoshaphat presents, and he had riches and honor and abundance, and his heart was lifted up in the ways of the Lord. Moreover, he took away the high places and the groves out of Judah. So Jehoshaphat was a saved man. He followed after the Lord. He sought after the Lord. Uh, he wanted to do what was right. He believed what was right. But we also see with, um, with Jehoshaphat here that he compromised with his associations. And uh, we see that a lot um, 
not just with new evangelicals, but we see it with Baptists as well. Uh, there are people that are saved, they believe in the Lord, uh, but they make these compromises in their lives uh, that hurt their Christian walk. And we see that right there at the beginning of 2 Chronicles 18. It says, Now Jehoshaphat had riches and honor and abundance and joined affinity with Ahab. And that was, was his problem right there. Um, he joined himself in affinity with this wicked man Ahab with his association. And it's interesting that it notes that uh, before it talks about him joining in affinity, it talks about uh, how he had riches and honor and abundance. Um, and that, that can happen to us. You know, everything's going well. Things are sm smooth sailing. We say, oh, why not? I can hang out with this guy over here. Everything's great in my life. Um, and that's when uh, the devil will bite up and jump up and bite you. Another thing that we see about um, Jehoshaphat that he has in common with sort of the new evangelical uh, movement of Christianity is that he sought biblical advice, but he didn't follow it. Um, in verse 28 there, after he had brought Micaiah in, you know, Jehoshaphat knew something wasn't right. Um, all of these other prophets were saying, oh yeah, you can go on, and Jehoshaphat's like, well, shouldn't we talk to a real prophet? Somebody who, who really knows the Lord? So they brought Micaiah in, and Micaiah told them what was going to happen. But there in verse 28, it says, um, so the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, went up to Ramoth Gilead. So after all that, you know, he sought biblical advice, but he didn't follow it. He went up to Ramoth Gilead anyway uh, with his pal Ahab. Um, and we see that a lot um, with Christians today. You know, they, they know what the Bible says. Um, they'll, listen to, they'll sit and they'll listen to preaching. But when they go out about their day, about their week, they don't follow uh, the things that they've been taught. They don't put it into practice. Um, and so... That's what we see in um, Jehoshaphat as representing the new evangelical um, element of Christianity. Next we see Zedekiah as the popular preacher. Um, 2 Timothy 4, 3 through 4 says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away from their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. You know, Zedekiah, uh, I think if he was alive today, he would be a televangelist. Uh, I, I can think of one curly-haired guy from Texas. Uh, I won't say his name because this is on YouTube, and I don't know, they could probably sue or something, I don't know. Um, uh, but these guys, they're all about putting on a show. And that's what Zedekiah was doing. If you look in verse 10 there in Second Chronicles 18, it says, And Zedekiah, the son of China had made him horns of iron and said, Thus saith the Lord, with these shalt thou shalt push Syria until they be consumed. So I don't know how big these things were, but he made himself some like bull horns out of iron, and he's carrying them around saying, We're going to take these and we're going to shove them right out. Uh, just making this big dramatic um, production uh, out of his position as a prophet. And we see that a lot with, with these televangelists uh, today. It's all about uh, putting on the show. Uh, it's all about uh, tickling people's ears um, and turning away their ears from the truth with fables. And usually it, it's about money uh, with those guys. Uh, we also see about Zedekiah uh, is that he was a, a liar. In uh, verse 11 there, Second Chronicles 18, he said, the, all the prophets prophesied so saying, go up to Ramoth Gilead and prosper for the Lord shall deliver it into the hand of the king. And that flat out wasn't true. That wasn't what the Lord had, had told them. The Lord hadn't told them anything like that. Um, but he was a liar. And we see that uh, with some of the prop, popular preachers of today. Um, you know, they'll, they'll say things um, uh, to egg people on, to get people to follow them. They'll say things that seem cutting edge that just don't have any uh, factual basis. They don't have any basis in, in the Bible, and, and they're not true. Um, so that is uh, another aspect that we see of Zedekiah. And then we also see that he was a mocker of sound doctrine. Uh, in verse 23, it says, Then Zedekiah, the son of uh, Chena, came near and smote Micaiah upon the cheek and said, Which way went the Spirit of the Lord for me to speak unto thee? And we already talked about that a little bit earlier. Um, he was just... He was mocking this sound doctrine, and we see that uh, a lot today. You know, people that believe the way we do, that believe 
what the Bible says uh, is what the Bible means, and people that follow what the Bible say, uh, they get mocked. Um, they say, uh, you know, we don't need to follow that anymore. Uh, the Bible is just kind of suggesting this. Uh, it's more of a principle. Um, it's not written in, in the Word of God uh, meant to be followed literally. Um, and they'll mock us if, if we believe that way. Um, and that's, that's what Micaiah did. And that's what we'll see um, from these popular preachers as well as they try to uh, gather itching ears unto them. And finally, we see Micaiah as the true preacher of faith. Uh, 2 Timothy 1, verse 13 says, Hold fast the, the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love which is in Jesus Christ. And that's what Micaiah was doing. He was holding fast to the sound words uh, of the Lord. And it's interesting because as a true preacher of faith, Micaiah was hated by the, the pagan ecumenical crowd. That would be Ahab. Uh, we read there in uh, verse 7 how uh, Ahab just basically said, I hate him because he never prophesies good unto me. Um, and, you know, true preachers are going to be hated by those who are false teachers who are um, not saved. The, the unsaved don't like the message of salvation uh, because uh, what they want is they want, uh, they want to live their own way. Um, they want to say, all religions are basically the same. There's many ways to get to heaven. And what that means is that we can all just make up our own way to get to heaven. And any way I want to live uh, is okay. Um, so he was hated by the ecum ecumenical crowd. And he was ignored by the new evangelical crowd, that being Jehoshaphat. Um, we talked about how uh, Jehoshaphat just ignored uh, his advice and went up. And uh, we see that a lot with, with sound preachers. Um, people who uh, preach good godly values get ignored uh, by those that they may be saved, uh, but they see no problem with uh, going out on the weekend and, and uh, uh, going to a concert, uh, an ungodly concert. They see no problem with getting together with their buddies and playing poker on the weekend. Uh, they don't see any problem with uh, getting together with the neighbors for a glass of wine. Um, you know, they, they believe, but they don't listen to sound preaching. Um, and then we also see that uh, as a, a preacher of faith, Micaiah preached the truth anyway. Uh, in verse 13 there, it says, And Micaiah said, As the Lord liveth, even what my God saith, that will I speak. And, and that's what we endeavor to do here. Um, you know, we want to we preach the word of God. We want to preach what the Lord has for us in his word. And um, you'll always hear a lot of scripture in the messages preached here. Uh, I've heard messages before where a preacher will like get up there and read one verse and then he'll talk for 30, 40 minutes and never bring up another verse. And that's just man's words, you know, that's not the word of God. Uh, you need to be listening to preaching that is from the word of God, that compares scripture with scripture, um, that, that follows what the Bible says and is not just giving man's opinion. Um, so that's how, uh, some, some of the modern parallels to the story here. I think it's kind of interesting how uh, mankind doesn't change, how we, uh, human nature just keeps going down through the ages. Um, so let's talk a little bit about uh, compromises and convictions. Um, we saw compromises in Jehoshaphat and we saw convictions in Micaiah. Um, one thing about compromise is that compromise is always a step down. Um, in verse 2, it says, and after certain years, he went down to Ahab of Samaria. Um, you know, obviously, that's talking about geographically because uh, Jerusalem was up at a higher elevation, so he went down uh, to Samaria. Uh, but I think it's interesting that it uses that term down uh, because when you compromise, you're, you're taking a step down. You know, some people think that, uh, oh, you know, I can have this person as my close friend and, and I'll influence them, right? I'll, I'll be a, a good influence on them. I'll share the gospel with them. I'll get them saved. I'll get them into church. But it rarely ever works out that way. Um, you know, I work with the teens and I, I see the influence that, that peers have on the teens of our church and the teens of other churches. And it, it never goes that way. You know, you start hanging out with someone who's ungodly they don't come to church. 
you go out and slowly and surely you follow what they're doing and the next thing you know you've compromised and you've taken the step down. And uh, you know as believers um, we're not supposed to ignore people out there. Obviously we're supposed to uh, witness to people. We're supposed to share the gospel. We're supposed to have relationships with the unsaved. Uh, but we shouldn't be having that affinity. Uh, I think what, what Jehoshaphat said there is, is your people are as my people and, and uh, I am as your people. He's saying, uh, we're, we're in this together, we're tight. And uh, you should not be that way with the unsaved. Uh, you should be that way with Christian people because if you get that way with the unsaved, you're gonna be taking the step down in that compromise. Another thing about compromise is compromise involves pressure. Uh, we saw that um, Micaiah was pressured um, by the um, religious leaders there to go with the flow, uh, to just follow along with what everybody else was saying. And, you know, that's the way that compromise gets us. Uh, peer pressure is a, a very strong thing. Um, and that's why uh, we need to watch out for our associations uh, because that pressure is going to come if we're associating with the wrong people. And that's where you will see um, that compromise start to come from that pressure. And uh, Micaiah did the right thing. Um, he didn't join an affinity with those guys. Uh, he stood his ground. Another interesting thing here, and this is a big one, is that uh, compromise becomes a way of life. Uh, turn over to 2 Chronicles 20, a few pages over. 2 Chronicles 20 and verse 35 through 37. This is a few years later, after Ahab is dead, Jehoshaphat is still in power. It says, and after this did Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, join himself with Ahaziah, king of Israel, who did very wickedly, and he joined himself with him to make ships to go to Tarshish. They made ships in Ezi and Geber. Then Eliezer, the son of Dodava and Merishah, prophesied against Jehoshaphat, saying, because thou hast joined thyself with Ahaziah, the Lord has broken thy works, and the ships were broken, that they were not able to go to Tarshish. So Jehoshaphat didn't just compromise this one time. Here you see it became a way of life for him. Here he was a few years later doing the same thing again with another wicked king, uh, joining himself to him and uh, going off on this venture with him. And the Lord chastised him for that. And, you know, that's the way it is in our lives, too. You know, you, you compromise. You, you compromise in this one little area. Next thing you know, you're compromising over here, and then you're compromising over here, and compromising becomes a way of life. Um, it's a dangerous road to go down when you start to compromise. And that's important because we also see that compromising will remove God's blessing. Uh, just back a page in 2 Chronicles 19.2, it says, And Jehu, the son of Hanai, the seer, went out to meet him and said unto King Jehoshaphat, Now shouldest thou help the ungodly and love them that hate the Lord? Therefore is wrath upon thee from before the Lord. Um, so once again, this was a different, um, different account um, than the other two we read about. So obviously, compromise was a way of life for Jehoshaphat. And it says that the wrath of the Lord was upon Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat was a saved man, remember, uh, but he lost God's blessing because he continued to compromise uh, with these ungodly associations. So that's compromising, uh, but what about convictions? Um, Micaiah had convictions. Well, it's not all uh, rose, roses and, and puppy dogs or whatever they say with convictions either. You know, convictions will make you unpopular. Um, we saw that uh, Micaiah was hated in 2 Chronicles 18.7. Um, and, you know, when you have convictions, when you stand up what, for what's right, uh, people don't like that. Um, because when you're standing up for what's right, that just makes people look at themselves and say, oh, I don't have those convictions. And people don't like that. Uh, they want you to be doing the things they're doing uh, so that they don't have to feel bad about the sins in their own life. Uh, so if you have convictions, uh, you are going to be unpopular with those who aren't living right. Convictions will also lead to persecution 2 Timothy 3.12 says, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. 
Um, and certainly we saw that for, for Micaiah. Ahab took him and, and had him uh, thrown in prison and said, fed the bread of affliction and the water of affliction. I'm not sure exactly what that means. I don't know if they gave him some uh, rotten bread or, or what, but I'm sure it wasn't pleasant, whatever it was. He was persecuted uh, because of his convictions. And, you know, we don't face much persecution in our country. Um, you know, you might have some people making fun of you, uh, some people being mean to you. Uh, but there are areas of the world where you will face persecutions for your, your convictions. And it's not beyond the realm of possibility that we could get there uh, in our country at some point. Um, but it's, it's, you need to know that going in, you know. You need to expect that you're going to have this uh, pushback if you have convictions. Otherwise, because if you're not ready for it, you're just going to cave under that pressure and you're going to compromise. But it is worth it because convictions will be rewarded. Um, Matt, turn to Matthew 5, and this will be our last verse. Matthew 5, verses 11 and 12. The Bible says, Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say, say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. So when it comes to your convictions, you need to take a long-term view of this. You need to realize in the big picture what this means. You know, our time here on earth uh, is just a small fraction of eternity. And uh, we need to keep our eyes on the Lord, keep, keep our eyes on the long-term goal um, and uh, what we can do for God's kingdom and what we can do that will last in eternity. And we need to have convictions uh, if we're going to make a difference for the Lord. So I hope that was a blessing to you tonight. Um, let's go ahead and have a quick word of prayer, and then um, we'll uh, stop the video, and uh, we'll have pastor's video loading in a few minutes. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for this uh, Bible study that we had this morning on, on this obscure character from the Old Testament, this prophet Micaiah, who was uh, just so steadfast and, and strong in, in his belief in you and in his convictions for the things that you told him to say. Lord, I pray that we could learn from him. I pray that uh, we would be strong in our own convictions, that we would know what we would believe, that we would um, stick to it, that we would not be persuaded by uh, those around us who uh, may pressure us, that uh, uh, may hate us for our beliefs, but that we would uh, stay strong, that we would continue delivering the message that you have for us to give the world. I pray that you would uh, just make us uh, strong Christians that are able to make a difference for you and that we can see uh, many people saved uh, because we have that strong belief in you. I pray that you'd just be with uh, the rest of the, this morning. I pray that you'd be with uh, pastor's message to follow. And I pray that you'd uh, just be with all of us as we are um, out and about in our own homes, uh, unable to, to gather together. I pray that you'd, you'd help the brethren um, to uh, just stay in your word, to uh, be following along. And I pray that you would, uh, most of all, just uh, bring us back together soon, that you would uh, heal the affliction in our land, um, and that you would uh, be glorified through all that's going on in our country today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.